What is your name, please? My name is Angela Cash, and I'm wearing a Silver Lamy airline dress trimmed with black velvet, with matching boots and hat. My name is Angela Cash, and I'm wearing a navy linen dress and jacket trimmed with white braid and a matching hat. My name is Angela Cash. I'm wearing a harlequin stretch halanka corduroy dress with matching cap and stockings. Only one of these young ladies is the real Angela Cash. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Orson Bean, Peggy Cass, the star of the Broadway musical Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes himself, Fritz Weaver, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening. Good evening, evening bud. Right. We're brought to you by Chef Boyardee, makers of a complete line of high-quality Italian-styled foods. Chef Boyardee. Tom Poston is not with us tonight, as you heard me say last week. He's appearing in Bye Bye Birdie in Seattle, Washington. Fritz Weaver, we're delighted to have you fill in for Tom tonight. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You are certainly seated between two charming companions. Yes. You should, you should thank us for that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Would you open up your envelope, please, panel, and follow along as I read on this first story. I, Angela Cash, am the youngest of the so-called British mod designers of women's clothes. At 15, I redesigned my school uniform without authorization and was almost expelled. At 17, I designed a few outfits for my parents' dress showroom. Mother and Dad thought they were dreadful. However, they caught the eye of a Swiss buyer who placed an order for every one of them. Encouraged, I founded my own firm. And two years later, my dresses were being sold in more than 20 different countries. My fall collection was shown here just last week at New York's newest discotheque, which happens to be owned by one of my clients, Sybil Burton. It is estimated that by the end of this year, at least one million young American women will be wearing my dresses. Signed, Angela Cash. <laughs> Our panel, these three young ladies all claim to be Angela Cash. We'll start the questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Cash, number one. One million of our fair ladies are going <laughs> to be walking around looking like you lot. <laughs> That's right, yes. Well, I personally think it's very charming. I like mod things. Uh, n number three, Sybil Burton just uh, got married uh, to a rock and roll type fellow. Do you know his name? Yes, Jordan Christopher. Number two, Jordan Christopher's group. What are they called? The Wild Ones. All right. Number two, again, uh, what is Arthur? Arthur is a discotheque. And what is it named after? It's named after Ringo's haircut. <laughs> All right. Number <laughs> one, what are boy watchers? Boy watchers? Yes. Number three, do you know? No, I don't. Number two, boy watchers. Girls that watch boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number three, what are pinking shears? The shears, the scissors used in dressmaking for finishing off the fabric. Number and two, who is Carolyn Maxwell? Peggy Cass. It's not. Number <laughs> one, I feel that your dress owes a small debt to a Parisian designer. Could you tell me who that is? Courage. Thank you. Uh, and it takes courage to wear it, too. Who <laughs> <laughs> doesn't wear it well? Oh, it's swell on her. Boy, like I can see me in it. Uh, number one, why do you wear boots with that? Well, because I like wearing boots. Oh, well, number three, isn't there uh, something to be between the length of the boots and the length of the hem on number one's dress? Uh, not necessarily, no. It does depend. Thank you. Uh, uh, number three, who is Mary Quant married to? Number two, <laughs> where's Mary Quant's main shop in Chelsea? On which street? Kings Road. Thank you. Uh, number one, who is Emanuela Khan? She's a French dressed uh, fashion designer. Thank you. Fritz Weaver. Number one, what is the difference between a mod and a, and a rocker? 
Um, a rocker is a chap who's all dressed up in black leather and who rides motor bicycles and loves rock and roll music. And a mod is someone who's very cool, who likes fashion, sort of, you know, sort of cooler clothes. Yes. Number two, uh, what is the, uh, the, the fashion center of the world at this moment? Which city? London. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, uh, the French fashions this year are, are, are characterized by uh, an absence of neckline. Uh, what do you think about this development? Uh, I think it has something to do with the space age. I see. <laughs> number... whatever that means. Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, does that bow that's on your chin stop you from talking? No, it doesn't. Not at all? Or does it sound as if it does? <laughs> I won't answer that. <laughs> Number two, what was the name of your parents' best showroom? London Town Dresses. Number three, can you tell me what school you were nearly expelled from? Yes. Wickham Abbey. Number two, what is the name of Mrs. Christopher, the present Mrs. Christopher's children, do you know? I have no idea. Uh, number one, do you know a magazine here called Women's Wear? I've heard of it, yes. Number two, do you know it? Yes. Do you know the name of the editor? No. Uh, number three, what does your dress take its derivation from, or your outfit, rather? Is that also courage? No. Number two, who does Saint Laurent design for? That's all we have time for. It is time for you now to mark your ballots on the information that you have gained. Mark them at once, without consultation, and, of course, without change, once you have marked. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all ballots marked? Very well. Orson, for whom did you vote? Well, they're all charming, uh, and uh, I think their outfits are all charming. And number two knew that Peggy's friend, Miss Quant, had her shop in Kings Road in Chelsea, and I know that Kings Road is in Chelsea. She also knew that Arthur was named after Ringo Starr's haircut. And I think number two has a sense of humor. She has dancing eyes, and those outfits have great humor in them, I think. Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for number two because of the King's Road. And also, the thing is, Carisha has those boots to compensate for those short hymns. And I thought number one should have known that. Fritz Weaver, which one did you select? I voted for number two on the grounds that number three uh, uh, seemed to think that uh, Paris fashions were marked by Hemla, an absence of, of necklines, which I didn't know. And uh, she accepted that. And number two speaks with great authority. Uh, and so does number one. But number two uh, appealed to me. <laughs> And Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number two. I think number two had the best answers, and I agree with you. Number two has a look of real humor, and uh, I like the outfit she's wearing the best. Unanimous for number two. Let's see what it does to you this time as we learn now which one of these ladies, in truth, is Angela Cash. Will the real Angela Cash please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much, Angela. Thank you. Now you're starting off smart tonight. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's having Sherlock with you or what. But yeah, it's that hat uh, that number three is wearing it looks a little bit deerstalkery to me. Is that inspired by Baker Street? By any <laughs> it well, I did see Baker Street. <laughs> I don't know. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, my name is Nicola Casson and I work as a receptionist for the Brook Street Secretarial Bureau. And what do you do? My real name's Carol Wilkie, and I work for Charles of the Ritz Vidal Sassoon. Oh. Well, we'll take the score and find that you ran head on into a very brilliant panel to start things off tonight. There were no incorrect votes, but in that case, there's still $150 coming your way. And we thank you so much for joining us. On your way out, of course, you'll receive a gift package from the makers of all the fine products made by the makers of Chef Boyardee. Thanks again, good night, and God bless you. Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is James Blackford. My name is James Blackford. My name is James Blackford. Follow along once again with your copy, if you will, please, panel. I, James Blackford, own and operate a unique hotel. We accommodate some 250 guests a day in our 65 rooms and suites. 
The north side of the hotel is for families and the south wing for bachelors and spinsters. We operate on the American plan. Guests may bring their own toys and if they wish their own beds, although each room is equipped with a tree stump and a sleeping shelf. I am well qualified by my background to serve my 40,000 annual guests since I am a former circus animal trainer. The clientele of my hotel consists entirely of cats. Signed, James Blackford. <laughs> panelies, three gentlemen all claim to be James Blackford, owner and operator of a hotel for cats. And since the subject is cats, I think it's only appropriate that we start questioning with our own kitty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> number one, where is your hotel for cats? In Canoga Park, California. Uh, number two, why do you have such a large hotel for cats? Who brings their cats there? All sorts of people. People who go on vacation, stars who are sent on uh, movie-making tours and want the Where best is care. your hotel? Los Angeles. Uh, number three, do you know a famous veterinarian called Dr. Salt? No, ma'am, I don't. Is yours in California? Yes, ma'am. Uh, number two, what is the difference between an Angora and a Siamese? Well, an Angora is any long-haired common cat. A Siamese is considered, at least we do, the queen of cats or Thank king you. of cats. Number one, how do you keep your cats happy in this hotel? Uh, we feed them their normal diet, whatever their uh, parents... Uh... What do you give them for recreation? Playtime. <laughs> Horse and bean. Uh, number two, what do you do about hairballs? I don't mean you personally, but I mean, what, <laughs> what, are, what, are, what is the cause and cure of hairballs? Well, the cause comes from cats licking themselves all the time, and they get the hair down in there. And I, what is and what we do? Cure? Well, we use a prepared uh, preparation, but you can use fish oils or... Vaseline is also very Number very one, have you heard that grass is good for hairballs? I don't think it's good for hairballs, but a certain amount of grass is good for cats. No, for what, number one? Huh? Peggy cats. At number two, do you have room service or the dining hall? <laughs> <laughs> Neither. Well, number three, how do you feed the cats? Well, they're dead in their rooms. Well, you do have room service at your place. Yes, ma'am. I see. Uh, number two, is there a, a number one, is there a maternity ward? Not exactly, but we do have a resident <coughs> veterinarian for cats right. who are about to give birth. Number two, you do accept uh, pregnant cats? Um, <laughs> with hesitation, yes. Oh, you mean... With oh, reservation. I, number three, do you give them like a little catnip every day before dinner? You know, no, ma'am. No catnip? No, ma'am. Number... Fritz Weaver. Uh, number two, what is the principal disease of cats? Enteritis. Mm -hmm. Number one... Uh, 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 do, do any of your employees suffer from cat allergies, any kind? No. No. Do you, do you, do you screen them for that purpose? We have never had one who had uh, cat allergy. I see. Uh, number three, I've heard uh, recently about psychiatric problems in cats. So wh what's the, uh, are you prepared to handle psychiatric problems with cats? No, sir. You're not? No, sir. Number two, are you prepared to handle psychiatric problems with cats? No. What do you do about cat hostilities, number one? <laughs> Uh, there is very little cat hostility in my hotel for the simple reason that a cat will be hostile only in his own home, which he considers to be his own territory. Interesting. And that's all the time we had. This could be a fascinating subject and go on for hours. But let's mark ballots now, shall we? Vote now, without hesitation and, of course, without any consultation. Simply vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked. All right, Orson, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number two. I liked uh, enteritis, what, what he said. It sounded like a real disease that your friendly neighborhood cat could have. <laughs> and he knew all about hairballs, so I voted for him. He looks like a, a cat hostile keeper. <laughs> Thank you, cat. Hello, I voted for number three because he said they didn't have any psychoanalysts for their cats. And after all, if you check it at the Hilton, they don't have a psychoanalyst there. Why should he provide it? Take care of your own cat. <laughs> Fritz Weaver. Number, I voted for number two, also for the reasons Austin gave about enteritis, but also his beard looks like a friendly cat-colored beard. So I thought... <laughs> Kitty Carla. Well, I think the ladies are together against the gentlemen. <laughs> I voted for number three. Um, I think he looks like a former 
animal trainer, and I don't believe that an Angora is an ordinary kind of cat. I think an Angora is a very special kind of cat, and I, for one, love them. Very well, there we have it. Evenly divided. Two for number two, two for number three. Let's find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is James Blackford. Will the real James Blackford please stand up? Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Neil Bueller. I'm in the real estate business. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Mel Shustak. I'm the editor of True Action magazine. <laughs> well, we'll check the score and find if you did better than the first round group this evening. You had uh, at least duped them into two incorrect votes. And that's twice $250 for a total of $500, gentlemen. And of course, on your way out, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Chef Boyardee. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Hope you enjoyed it, too. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> right now, let's take time out for a brief film. Back in a minute. Now, may I present our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gerald Hawkins. My name is Gerald Hawkins. My name is Gerald Hawkins. Follow along again with your copies of this story. I, Gerald Hawkins, am a professor at a large American university. For years, I have been fascinated with the mystery of Stonehenge, that huge circle of massive stone blocks erected centuries ago on Salisbury Plain by the prehistoric inhabitants of England. Why Stonehenge was built has always been a puzzle to archaeologists. As an astronomer, I developed my own theory. I visited Stonehenge on three different occasions, taking motion pictures and compiling charts and surveys. I fed all my findings into a computer. The results were astonishing. They proved that Stonehenge was built to serve as an astronomical observatory that could accurately measure the change of the seasons and predict eclipses of the sun and moon. The most dramatic proof of my theory is the fact that on only one day each year does the sun rise directly over a spot called the heel stone. That day is today, the first day of summer, June 21st. This morning at Stonehenge, the sun rose directly over the heel stone as it has done on every first day of summer for the past 4,000 years. Signed, Gerald Hawkins. And so we bring you three gentlemen, all claiming to be Gerald Hawkins, with an amazing story. We'll start with Peggy Cat. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Um, number two, in which county is Stonehenge? Wiltshire. Wiltshire. Uh, thank you. Number three, at which large American university do you teach? In North Carolina. And university. number two, you? <laughs> Purdue University. And number one? Boston University. Oh. Uh, number, number two, do you don't feel it's had any religious significance with the Druids? Do I feel that it does? Yeah, that, well, do you feel that, the, that, that this was a, relig a religious significance in Druidical things? No, I don't feel that. You don't? Number one, what is your theory of how they got all those stones there with the other stones on top of them? I don't know. The, the archaeologists have ideas. Uh... You have no idea. Number three, has, there, uh, has this ever been presented uh, on any uh, program, like a television program, this history of Stonehenge, your theory? Uh, uh, not directly, except in this thing here. I see. Fritz Weaver. Uh, number two, uh, what is the precession of the equinoxes? The, excuse me. Hmm? Number two? Uh, number two, yeah, number I'm two. sorry, number uh, two. Piskies, um, Aries, uh, Gemini. I see, thank you very much. Uh, that, that answers my question. Uh, number three, uh, uh, when is the summer solstice? Uh, the summer solstice is right now. Mm -hmm. What specific date uh, uh, does it begin on? The 21st. Thank you. And number one, what was the name of the uh, prehistoric uh, uh, inhabitants, of, uh, the, the, the tribe of prehistoric inhabitants who built Stonehenge? 
Several uh, tribes built Stonehenge. Uh, but can you give me a name, please? Kitty Carlisle. Number three, can you tell me the names of the stones? Uh, one is called Menhirs, I think, of Stonehenge. Uh, the Trillerons, the uh, principal one, the pointing stone, is called the Monk's Heel in ancient medieval times. And uh, can you spell Menhir number two? No, I cannot. Number three, uh, a famous um, astronomer has just uh, promulgated a new theory about the Big Bang based on the blue galaxies. Can you tell me his name? Uh, yeah, Eddington. Uh, do you agree with that, number two, um, in California? Not recently. Recently it was Gamma. Thank you. Um, number one, uh, how did the Druids get there? Get to Stonehenge? Mm -hmm. Well, there's no evidence that the druids had anything to do with it. No, do you know the names of... Uh... Orson B. Number one, uh, what is the Big Bang Theory? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> the universe. Uh, it's a cosmological theory. What is it as opposed to the others? Well, the universe is exploding in a Big Bang. At the beginning oh. or the end? Right now. Oh, all right. Yeah. Number number three. Were the did the blue druids did the bluids paint themselves blue? <laughs> did they indeed uh, paint themselves blue? Wood. I think they did. They were I, supposed to have anyway. Why was that number three? I imagine religious significance. Probably identified with the sky since they worshipped Apollo. Number two. The thing is enormous, isn't it? Yes. How big a cross is it? What's the diameter? I mean, the, the, uh, thing uh, the from outer one, ring. Uh, yeah, from one point. Three hundred and twenty-four feet. Well, why would it? That's all we have time for. So measurements to the contrary notwithstanding, mark your ballots, if you will. Mark them at once, without change and without consultation, as usual. Voting for number one, number two, or number three. All are not quite marked. All right. Now they are. And Orson, for whom did you vote? I think they're all marvelous. They're gr two great liars sitting up there. Yeah. I think it's number one because I think he tried to out be a little too foxy and not answer quite enough. Of it. I think if he'd been one of the fakes, he would have answered a little more. Peggy Cat. I'm very worried about the Big Bang. I don't like that part at all. Are we going to go up tonight? <laughs> no. no. I voted for number one because really because he has kind of an English accent. Who didn't say he was an American? Fritz Weaver. I voted for number three. Uh, uh, largely because number two gave me astrological data in answer to an astronomical question. And number one um, uh, uh, didn't seem to know the relationship with the Druids to Stonehenge. And number three satisfied me on most of those points. Elementary. Elementary. <laughs> well, I voted for number one because the Big Bang Theory, which is based on the Blue Galaxies, which just came out in the paper a couple of days ago, was promulgated by a man whose name, I think, is Sandage. And number two and three didn't know that. And number one sort of did know, but I don't think it's number one either. <laughs> <laughs> that produces three votes for number one, none for number two, and one for number three. Very well, let's go with that. We'll find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is Gerald Hawkins. Will the real Gerald Hawkins please stand up? Oh! <laughs> Thank you, sir. His name was Juan. Was it Sandy? No, I have my own theory of cosmology. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. You may be seated, if you will. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Mac Buck, and I work for the Shell Chemical Company in New York City. <laughs> Thank you. And number three, what, what is your name and what do you do, sir? My name is Francis Van de Veer Kugler, and I'm a portrait and mural painter. Incidentally, just to keep the record straight, although it was briefly mentioned, Dr. Gerald Hawkins is a professor at Boston University. Is that right, sir? And he also is an, uh, an astronomer at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. Is that correct? Yes. I want to make sure I pronounce all those correctly. Well, in checking the score, we find that there were th uh, three correct votes uh, and only one incorrect, but that's still worth $250, gentlemen. On your way out, you will be the recipients of a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Chef Boyardee. We thank you warmly and sincerely for sharing this evening with us. Good night and God bless you. That's all we have time for tonight. You make it go so fast, but I thank you for that. Good night, panel. Good night. Good night, bud. Good night for Chef Boyardee.
Now, join us at the same time next week. Of course, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. And in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you by Dristan Tablets for relief of colds, misery, sinus congestion. Dristan to help unclog congestion that fills your head with colds, misery. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program pre-recorded.